And welcome back to Talking Football here at TalkingSports.tv at Charlie Fitzwhiskey's in Vaughan, Ontario. I'm Marty York. This is Uncle Ben of UncleBenFootball.com. Handsome Howard Kamen is on assignment. Let's just say that. And uh, Ben, uh, we have to talk about some of the developments that have taken place this week following last week's outcomes. And one of the most major developments has taken place in Tampa where quarterback Josh Freeman, and if you recall last week, I did say to you, Josh Freeman's just not playing like Josh Freeman. Not that he was ever a superstar, but he was somewhat solid there for a while. I agree. Well, he's having a rough year. The Tampa Bay Bucks are 0-3. Uh, they play this weekend against Arizona in Tampa Bay, and uh, they've made a co- uh, quarterback change. Mike Glennon, six foot seven product out of high-scoring North Carolina State, comes in as starter. Josh Freeman is benched. Good idea or no? My opinion, good idea. Tell you why. First of all, Greg Schiano and Josh Freeman did not see eye to eye. They did not. Things just weren't gelling for them. Uh, in fact, Freeman had was, hadn't completed over 50% of his passes in any one game this year. And last year, I believe they lost their last six, no, six of their last, five of their last six games. They've lost eight of their last nine games, I believe, the Tampa wow. Bay Buccaneers. Okay. Um, they're 0-3 right now. Yep. Chances of making the playoffs are slim, dim, and nil, I would say. It's possible. It has been done before. Unlikely. But slim, dim, and nil. So this team needs to find... Uh, Josh Freeman's a free agent at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. They need to find out now, not at the end of the season, what Mike Lennon can do because chances are they're not going to resign this fellow. Mike, tell us a little okay. bit about Mike Lennon. Well, Mike Lennon was a very good quarterback, came out of NC State, very good uh, high school, a very good college school for producing quarterbacks. Uh, they produced uh, Philip Rivers. He's pretty good. And they've also produced Russell Wilson. He's doing very well as well. Not bad at so, all. So, you know, they've had a great uh, history of quarterbacks there. Glennon's very big, strong kid, good arm. Uh, learns well. I think Shiano can make something out of him, whereas he inherited Freeman, and Freeman was sort of had his own little mold already cut, and he couldn't, couldn't change it, whereas here he's got a fresh, you know, canvas to work with, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, it's a high draft pick. He did well at college. He played in a good division conference, I should say. You know, it's a competitive conference, the ACC. Got some good schools there, good defenses. And I think it's a good, good choice by the organization, not just Greg Schiano. This is not something the coach decides. This right. is something the organization decides. Okay. And I think that um, I like the choice. I like the choice a lot. Well, we'll see what uh, Glennon has to offer. In this game, uh, Ben, Tampa Bay is a two-and-a-half-point favorite at home against the Arizona Cardinals. Oh, I know this isn't one of your top plays of the week, but just to give our viewers an idea of what you're thinking might happen in this game. Well, the spread tells me, and if you go to my how to win section, it tells you about how odds makers can manipulate things into thinking. This is kind of like what happened in the Cleveland, Minnesota game last week. Mm-hmm. Okay, they're 0 3. They're playing against a 1 and 3, a 1 and 3 Arizona's coming in to play an 0 3 team at home. The 0 3 team has looked horrible. They lost at the Jets on opening day, a game that everybody thought they were going to win. Right. They, got, they went into New England, I mean, they lost to New Orleans, and then they went into New England last week, and I think they scored three points. Yeah, they looked awful. Yeah, horrid. Um, they're favored by 2.5 points. Yeah. The 0 3 team is favored by 2.5 points with a quarterback who's never thrown or stepped on an NFL field in his life. Don't you think some of the action is going to be going in Arizona this game? I do. Yeah. Don't you think the odds makers are maybe looking for that Arizona action here? Carson Palmer, seasoned veteran. This guy's never played a snap. I mean, it's like you said, it's not one of the games I really like. But if I had to play on this game, I would go with the hometown Bucks to get and, the win. And let's face it, Carson Palmer reeks. I mean, Carson Palmer is wretched. He should have retired many years ago. I mean, he, he did terribly with Oakland. He's not so good in Arizona. Yeah, they won one game. And he's got Larry Fitzgerald. But that was against Detroit Detroit. on the road, and they're horrid on the road. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, I mean, uh, this Arizona team, I do like the coach, Arians. I think he gives that team a bit of a lift. I agree. But but Palmer, eh. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm with you. you got to go with Tampa Bay. I think they're going to get off the schneid here and win their first game. I would agree with that. All right. I I like that. I, I think that's, you know, it's not one of my plays of the week. But like I said, I would definitely side with Tampa Bay there at home. This team needs a win. Now, Josh Freeman has lost his job. There's another more veteran quarterback whose uh, job is tenuous, to say the least. I think there were people out there who thought the Philadelphia Eagles would have a stronger season this year. And so far, 
they've looked shaky. And they're one and two. Uh, that offense that Chip Kelly is introducing, the high-powered, uh, fast-paced offense, isn't doing very much. And there are people who are pointing their fingers at the veteran quarterback, Michael Vick. Ben, what are your thoughts about Vick's performances so far? And do you think, and he, do you think he might be in some trouble there? Well, if you think back to the first Monday night of the year against the Washington Redskins, I were. In the, didn't this look like the perfect marriage? I mean, in the first half, yeah, it they did. were unbelievable. The yeah. perfect marriage, Chip <laughs> Kelly and, uh, and Michael Vick. I'm thinking to myself, wow, wow. Th this, yeah. this might just really work. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then after the, I don't know what happened at halftime in that first week, but it's been all downhill from yes, there pretty much. They look terrible against Kansas City. They look terrible in that halftime against Wash <clears throat> after halftime in Washington. And th 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 Michael Vick does not look very good. Right. Now, is it because of the offensive line or is it him? Well, you want my honest opinion, yeah. Marty? Yeah. I've never liked Michael Vick. To me, he's never looked very good. Sure, he's had streaks of brilliance, but I remember back in the day when he was running for 800 and 900 yards, leading his team in rushing. And I used to tell people, you know, show me a quarterback that's leading his team in rushing, I'll show you a bad football team. Okay? Because mm -hmm. he never took him to the promised, any of his teams to the promised land. And he's not. And I agree with you. He's on a thin rope. And I think if they lose this week uh -huh. against Denver, which they probably will, okay, probably, I didn't say they will, probably will. I think Michael Vick's going to be out of, the, out of the lineup card. And, and personally, similar, similar to what's going on in Tampa Bay, mm -hmm. Matt Barkley, I don't know if anybody, you people out there know who Matt Barkley was, but he was the quarterback at USC and when they were, I think, in the top five in the nation. Uh, he but got, he underachieved last season. He did. Yeah. He did. That's because their coach, Lane Kiffin, is a complete bonehead, for lack of a better <laughs> word, okay? Because that program's got nowhere went down since Lane Kiffin took over that program, and they're no roaring hell again this year. But anyhow, I believe that Matt Barkley will be similar to what's going on with Matt, Mike Glennon. It gives Chip Kelly something he can mold, as opposed to having a veteran in there who's got all his ways set. You know, he, he's just, he's not grasping this, this new concept that comes out of college. And I just think that, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of heat on Chip Kelly, too, you know, to produce. Well, and, you know, and paying and this ben, guy a lot of dough. Ben, I'll tell you something. Uh, this weekend... Uh, the uh, Philadelphia Eagles do not have an easy task. So Michael Vick's days uh, as quarterback uh, could very well be numbered. And I think the heat is going to be on Chip Kelly because look at who they play this weekend. They're at Denver. I mean, Denver, to me, is right up there among the most solid teams in the league. Well, Peyton I... Manning's looked outstanding. Philadelphia's got a tough task trying to win that game. They're 10.5-point underdogs in Denver. Who do you like in this game? I got to like the Denver Broncos myself. I mean, they've won. First of all, Peyton Manning's a scoring machine right now. He's unstoppable. Whether that goes on forever, who knows? But nothing goes on forever, and the Philadelphia defense isn't very good. All right? They got a bunch of old, slow, secondary people that Peyton should have his way with. The only way that Philadelphia has any chance to win this game is to outscore them. Denver's won, I think, 11 or 12 regular season games in a row. Of course, mm -hmm. they lost that playoff game last year to Baltimore, but 11 or 12 regular season games in a row, and they probably covered the spread in most of those, if not mm -hmm. all of them. It's hard to go against the Denver Broncos right now, Marty. I don't care what the spread is, and I don't care who they're playing. So do you think Vic gets replaced by Barkley on, on, on this game, in this game? No, not okay. in this game. Yeah. I'm saying down the road. When Philadelphia's, you know, wallowing in a probably something like a four and eight record by the end of the I season see. yeah and they've had enough of michael vick and nick Foles. that's when you're going to see Mike, matt barkley all right let's move on to another troubled team i have to get your interpretation of what the heck is going on with the new york giants i mean it wasn't that long ago when eli manning and company were winning super bowls what the heck's wrong with this team they're zero three well they have taken so much heat in the new york press this week i mean i don't think tom coughlin Tom Coughlin's all he done is answer questions all week about what about this, what about that, what are you going to do, where are you going to be, what's happening. And, it, you know, it's a bad situation. That's an interesting game, though, this week. This is what I call a very, very fish or unusual point spread. This you is a game in that? Kansas City. The Giants are four-and-a-half-point dogs. Yes, four, four-and-a-half, depending on, you know, where you're looking. Right. But it's, a, it's just this spread doesn't make any sense to me. Here's a team, the Kansas City Chiefs, that are getting all the press – they're riding high like, and they're rising up in the power rankings like a bullet right now. They're 3-0. and They're playing against a New York Giant team that's 0-3. They've turned the ball over 12 or 13 times. They've lost all their games. They're giving up boatloads of points. They've given over 30 points in every game. 
Kansas City's coming off 10 days rest because they played last Thursday night. They got extra prep time. They're playing at home in Arrowhead, and they're four points favorites against an 0-3 team. This spread should not be four points. This spread should be seven, eight, nine, ten points, not four. Something tells me that the New York Giants get off the Schneid this week and beat the Kansas City Chiefs well, I right in Arrowhead. I can, I can tell you somebody who is in 100% in agreement with you, the offensive coordinator of the New York Giants, a friend of mine, Kevin Gilbright, who used to be a coach in the CFL. And uh, I was talking to him earlier this week. And let me tell you something, Ben. He said that Eli Manning's game plan for this week is going to be totally different. He said the Chiefs, in his opinion, will not be able to handle what, and it's a pass-happy offense, and they will not be able to handle what Eli Manning and Nix, Hakeem Nix, and Cruz and the rest of that offense has in mind for the Chiefs. I don't know. We'll see. That could be coach speak. But he's very, very confident that the Giants bounce back. I agree with you. I say take the Giants plus the points. Well, I, like, I agree with what you said. This team's not that far removed from Super Bowl championships. And Coach Tom Coughlin is a very, very good coach. Okay? Well-respected by his players. And he, he's a motivator. And, you know, a bit of a whiner, though. He's a bit of a whiner. <laughs> but... Most of coaches are. Yeah, yeah that's okay? true. And I do a little bit of whining myself sometimes, <laughs> yeah, and especially I do on too. Sunday afternoon. So does our executive producer, Dave Grossman. But, but I just think that, you know, the New York Giants are a pretty damn good football team to be 0-3, and they can certainly play a lot better than they have. All right, here's a team that I don't think is good because we're talking about people in trouble. The, the Pittsburgh Steelers, I thought if they were ever going to come out strong, it might have been last week. Uh, they had the Bears. I know you didn't. You liked the Bears. But the Steelers... No, I didn't. didn't. No, you like no, the Steelers too. That's right. No, I didn't. I thought the Steelers were going to actually yeah, win Yeah, and game. here the Steelers were two and a half point uh, favorites over the Bears. The Bears not only won the game, they won the game impressively. The Steelers look like they're in so much trouble. Ben Roethlisberger doesn't look anything like he used to. I think the team misses Mike Wallace as their deep threat. Uh, they don't have much of a running back. They play in That's London. The that is the problem right That is there. the problem. They can't run they the ball. They lost Mendenhall. Yeah, and I mean, LeVon Bell's injured. And LeVon Bell's injured. Yes. And so they're using guys who, to me, shouldn't even be playing in the NFL, uh, Dwyer and whoever else they're using. So the Steelers look terrible, and I actually think they're going to have a tough time this week as well. They're playing the Minnesota Vikings, another horrible team. But the Vikings uh, are dogs in London, England. Ben, this is an interesting game. What are you thinking about this? Well, you know, this game, I honestly, I have no opinion on this game. Like, we just don't. You know, not that I've, I'm, I've been real solid. We'll get to my solid picks later. But, yes. But this game here, I have absolutely no idea on, okay? They, both these teams are going over to Eng England on Tuesday. They, 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 they head over there or something like that. They have a bit of a social thing going on over there. <laughs> you know, it's a bit, you know, That's I what they, know, just what you know, two teams it, it, that are on 3-1 want right. to do, well, socialize. You know, it's a big production by the NFL. There's all kinds of downtown, uh, you know, f f f uh, festivities sure, happening yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, a lot you of know, hype. A lot they got to do a lot of promo work yeah, for players, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And let's just say they're not, you know, in the film room as much as they would be if they were playing at home. So, Good point. But although it is equal for both teams. Yeah. So I don't see them, you know, putting any new wrinkles, changing a lot of things this week, you know, getting a new game plan together. They're going to go with what they got. What they got isn't very good. I have no opinion on this game, Marty. Honestly, I can't help you on this one. The spread is, I believe, Pittsburgh. Two and a half. Two and a half. <sighs> Pittsburgh can't run the ball, and that's why Ben Roethlisberger's having problems because they know that teams are teams are know they can't run the ball, so they're just letting they're pinning their ears back and going after Ben. And Ben's taking taking a lot of pressure, and he can't seem to get the ball downfield to anybody. Mike Wallace wouldn't help him if the guy's sitting flat on his ass. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I mean, really, that's I'm being true. honest with you. That's true. You know, the Vikings blew a game last week against Cleveland. You know, Cleveland had their third string quarterback. I don't like this game at all. Both teams are in disarray. I have yeah. no opinion on this one whatsoever. Well, Sorry. I, I, no, I'm, I agree with you. I say this is a game to stay away from, but if you have to make a bet, and there's some people who just absolutely have to, take Minnesota plus the two and a half points. We're going to take a break. When we return, we're going to pick uh, Ben's brains about what he calls fish spreads. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned.